My previous commentary video was well received, so here's one for pure crystal beasts. Again, I'll start by showing what my strategy does on a good day. Good luck is boring though, so all the other replays will showcase what I do when things go wrong. If I only have one spell for summoning Ruby, then I go for Saryuja as my fifth summon to guarantee that a tragic primal can't stop me from drawing. If I have a backup spell, I'd rather build more resources first to bait out the primal. If they don't stop the world sea dragon, then I know they have nothing. So I spam all the crystals, saving awakening for the end, so I can get even more crystals to load up Rainbow Ruins. This board has seven negates, a bounce, a floodgate, and two pops for the battle phase. I think one time somebody broke through it? That was impressive. My master dual build is constantly changing. This is the combo control blend that I built on stream, though later I'll transition it to a turbo build. You probably don't need Rainbow Ruins, but I'm theatrical and my wombo combos just don't feel complete without spell and trap negation. Here's an interesting duel against Exo Sisters. I've got at least two quick banishes to bait out, and who knows what else. Sapphire baits impermanence, which is fine, always start with an effect that you don't really need. Bond gets the rainbow anyway, and a golden ruby to build up to. But first, I use these materials for Baguska so Heart can safely bounce Magnifica. The opponent uses her and a second trap to stop these. So now it's time to fire off the golden ruby. More disruptions reduce the resulting swarm, and I decide to spend the last of them to take out the final disruption. Because after all that, I had a Colossus. It's no overdrive, but for an opponent who has just spent all of their resources, the Floodgate sealed their fate. This duel started by playing Fire Emblem for 10 minutes until I heard the phase change sound effect. Rainbow Dragon has an unexpectedly easy matchup against Snake Eyes because they focus on just spamming so many bodies you can't possibly attack over them, but Rainbow Over Dragon only needs one attack to win, and it can also reset the board during the battle phase. It doesn't care how many monsters you summon. At first I wanted to use Valence World to take out their field spell and Apollo, and I figured I could still bait out SP and Promethean Princess while going through Heart to bounce Apollo. I wondered if I should have gone for Salvation in the Valence Worlds here instead, but it worked out well. See, I was going to use Golden Rule to place Ruby, and then go through Ancient Fairy Dragon to get Valence World to summon the Ruby, but I forgot that I don't run Ancient Fairy Dragon in this build, nor a Crystal Beacon because it's combo control, which meant all of my spells had now been spent. I wasn't going overdrive this turn, so instead I'd set up some traps. I forgot that the opponent had Garunix in the graveyard when I destroyed this fire monster, so I figured they were waiting for me to spend Sapphire's attack and have nothing left to take out a revived Arvada, who could negate something on the next turn. So I ended my turn there best I could do, noting some changes to make after this duel. Maybe the opponent messed up here? There was a lot going on. I was surprised that they weren't able to get lethal damage. I think they also messed up on my turn, wasting the Crystal Wing and the SP, though I don't think it would have mattered since you'll see I had a lot of summons ready to go. I also bounced their last fire monster so the princess in the graveyard couldn't trigger. I had far more than I needed and the clock was ticking. I really, really hate Master Duel's timer. It disproportionately punishes combo players even though I am playing as fast as I can. I went for Zealantis to snatch back that cobalt so I could get seven banished monsters for Overdrive's one hit kill. Getting my crystal wing back was a pleasant bonus. The final attack went through with three seconds left on the clock despite mashing buttons this whole turn. Do you think I was stalling? Konami did. Ugh. The Master Duel timer is a disgrace. I hate it so much, I'm just gonna keep ranting. I had an amazing duel playing through like 10 disruptions from Rescue Ace, but that one timed out while I was resolving overdrive, so I was handed an automatic loss. Really, Konami? So I decided to make some changes, away from the silly deck I'd been using on stream, and toward a more serious turbo build. I've had great matchups against Rescue Ace so far. Here's an example of how Heart helps to play through disruption, especially when I can follow up with Golden Rule. Unfortunately, I had just removed the second ruby from this build, thinking I wouldn't need it, but if I did have that ruby, I could have used Beacon to keep on swarming. Instead, I could only grab a miracle that wouldn't be enough. It was also stupid of me to crystallize that sapphire. I could have had space to search for Bond and gotten to seven crystals, Crow Sheep and Overdrive, which SP couldn't have stopped, or I could have just left that space open to get Heart back on the field, bouncing something off of Miracle's Destruction, and maybe surviving the next round. I've been in such a rush to make this week's video, I've had too much on my mind to duel properly. Here's some PhD in dueling material right here. With Revolution Synchron and Valence World, I was all set for a swarm. Valence would stop impermanence and evenly, Max C would recover after Primal, so the only thing I had to watch out for was 
Droll, which is why I searched for Miracle just in case. Rather than going 100% turbo, I covered my bases first. With all counter plays accounted for, all I needed was for Saryuja to draw anything. So I drew triple max C. I could have been playing speed duel right now. The opponent goes directly to the end of the battle phase, and then to main phase too. After a dramatic pause, he starts doing Horus stuff and angrily discards the evenly matched whose activation was prevented by the Valence world. To be fair, at my last YCS, I hadn't even noticed that interaction, and I wonder how many matches it cost me. With his battle phase skipped, he was confident that Vanity's ruler and Sanifon could skip my turn, but Valence took out his ruler and heart the Sanifon. Double rainbow to the awesome. Don't try to lock down Crystal Beast, it ain't gonna work. As a TCG player, this was my first time seeing the Fire King Courtier in action, and wow, she's nuts! With a handful of spells and plenty of practice against the rest of them, I wasn't worried. This looks like a lousy board, but Fire Kings can make a little go a long way. I started by triggering Heart without spending a summon. I didn't bounce the island because erupting the volcano actually helps pure Fire Kings. I could handle a board wipe too, so I bounced the only unknown. This forced the sky burn a little too early for it to be optimal. Negating the sap fire here seems dumb, but it was actually a great move. With heart destroyed and bond spent, it seemed I had no way to get more crystal beasts. I hadn't searched ruby, so I probably didn't have golden rule, or even if I did have it and some other monster, I wouldn't be summoning ruby. Well, I was able to get rule and awakening, but I didn't quite think ahead. I placed ruby thinking I'd use the awakening to get valence world, but apparently that wouldn't have hit seven crystals. I could have placed something other than ruby and used awakening to summon ruby from the deck. So I had to change course here, I, but I didn't even go for Necro Valley. Sometimes I want to be theatrical more than victorious. Still, I only needed to draw one Crystal Beast, but for the second time this day, probably the second time this year, Saryuja whiffed! So okay, I got nothing but a miracle for the next turn. I always stop High Garunix because it gets the most damage on the board. That was enough to survive, so back to my turn, I drop Rainbow for game. Wait, what? I used Dugaris last turn, so my main phase is skipped?! Okay. Time to change course again. Well, thanks to the Rainbow Ruins reward points I've been accumulating, I've earned a free Ruby Summon, which baits Arvada and negates impermanence. A pathway to a Crow Sheep combo forces Garunix Eternity, but it still can't stop Overdrive, so I figured I'd end on Apollo to negate all those Fire King effects and just beat down from there. With a golden ruby combo and talents, I could muscle through pretty much anything but impermanence here, and with two normal summons to spare. People tend to drop their primals when they see World Sea, so I should have summoned that before spending Valence World, but live and learn. The talents did indeed draw into more options, two spells, so I was able to go full combo anyway. If I didn't have the talents, I would have played more defensively. I just really don't want to risk a board breaker. Primal rarely stops me. A combo control build can pivot into traps, and a turbo strategy can use extra summons like Beacon and Valence to keep going anyway. The token also makes for good link material. They were playing Fire Kings and used the quick spell to destroy Apollo. I let it through so I could hold on to Miracle in case of board breakers, because I can handle the monsters. I did not want trap tricks going off with a lousy hand like this, so I shotgunned both responses. The gambit paid off as I got Sapphire and Heart. By triggering Heart's bounce at the same time as the opponent's chance to use a trap, I was able to get it off the field before a summoned Mermelio could destroy it. Lastly, I figured even if the opponent dropped a primal mid-combo here, Call could check a new Sarah, Conclave could buy time, and Heart would guarantee enough crystals for a Rainbow Dragon and a bounce for the next turn. This build was before Golden Rule, using a couple of silly spells you'll see. What a relief that this hero player didn't end on Dark Angel. I opened with a backup copy of Heart, so I was safe to start by bouncing Plasma. Next, I wanted to bait out Favorite Contact before going big. I forced its activation by going for Necro Valley, but to my surprise, the opponent left it active. They probably thought I was just bluffing and it would hurt me more than them. No idea why I didn't use Nightmare Fear Phoenix to destroy the other trap. I think I wanted to use Aegis's destruction to free up monsters for overdrive, but I was gonna end up with an extra sapphire anyway, so I guess my math was off. Well, the trap never flipped. I'm loving the Nemesis engine because I don't have to worry about names getting lost, and because that also means I can cut Amethyst. I don't have to worry about accidentally hitting eight names anymore, and this frees up so many brain cells. I hope you found this commentary enlightening. Personally, I think my 
IQ has dropped about 20 points from how much Master Duel I had to play this week to make this video. If you'd like to see more Crystal Beast weirdness, or general Yu-Gi-Oh insights, or even just watch me suffer on stream, check out my channel. I make at least one new Yu-Gi-Oh video every month, and unfortunately, I'm not running out of ideas.